If you have a passion for robotics, coding, making things with 3D printers, you are in the right place. This is going to be my crash course on basically it's going to be a starter kit. Everything you will want to start with. If I were to give this to someone who's just interested in robotics for the first time and like, hey, where do you get started with coding and building things and community and inspiration? This video is for you. This is what I learned to pretty much build robots to automate both my job and other people's jobs. So that's the cool thing about learning robotics. Like, why would you want to learn robots and code? and stuff because you can automate work you can build things that build little smart robots this is just so cool we're gonna geek out so this is completely for beginners uh where to get started what do you need to uh what do you need to buy and this is stuff that i've used along the way um so let's start off with community join a robotics club and the inventor of segway uh started this uh nonprofit called first first robotics competition they hosted at schools across the nation and they have it for all grades from little kids all the way up to like high schools and it's also sponsored by um big corporations or big companies that are looking to hire kids or professionals on how to actually build robots for their company and stuff like that so that's why this is really cool you're going to hook up with a community of people that love to build you get a project and then there's a competition where you build a robot for the competition it is so cool so i highly recommend you could google search like robotics club in your area or go to their website to find out more information about a, uh, a um, an event uh or even if your school you, uh, may host it too, which is really cool. You can also go to their YouTube channel, First Robotics Competition, where you can actually watch previous year's competitions. And these, the robots that these kids built are amazingly complex and sophisticated and is such a great learning experience. It They have such, um, Oh, and it's just such a great community. Like it's everyone just loves building things and supporting each other and learning and growing. So you could check out a lot of the competitions online so you can see what are they building? What, and then you could build your own. There's nothing, they're just parts that you could order online and just build your own at the same time. So you're not restricted, which is really cool. But that this is the closest to like a sport uh, that you could like join to actually compete, which is so awesome. But where do you get started? And this is years ago, I used to teach out of Makerspace and I used Arduino. Arduino is a it's a development platform or it's a little circuit board that teaches students two things. One, how to code. Uh, you learn like C or C++ coding. Uh, it's super simple. And already, I could tell you right now, here's the hack. Someone has already written the code and it's online. So your goal is just to find a piece of code or, or a project that has code that's close enough to what your project is. And everything's like Frankenstein. You're just copy pasting and just piecing together other people's code until you figure out how to, you're troubleshooting. Troubleshooting until you figure out you get your code working because most of it is really troubleshooting which is really fun but that's the really cool thing it's so easy to learn how to code using arduino um, and then the second part that it teaches you is circuit design how to build robots where and robots pretty much have like two components basically you have sensors and these are things that sense the environment it could be temperature it could be air it could be light uh it could be movement and then it will uh it will manip the second thing is motors or things that will manipulate the physical world turn doorknobs uh open levers um open a latch or something like that um or switch a giant switch for like a light um uh, something like that so basically you have this small little chip right here this is the brain and that's it the chip this little brain chip like you can buy a bunch of these little chips for like 50 cents or about a dollar each and then you could just pop them out and then put them in your final project but it's really just this circuit board and everything around it is just to it's basically a, it's a development board it's meant to rapidly prototype an idea you have an idea you're like oh i want to do a i want to do a little robot that um that automates my gardening for example senses the soil uh, moisture level and then if it's too dry turn on a water pump to feed my garden for example super simple automated so you don't have to do it which is great so you have these pins all along the side here on the left hand side see if i go down yeah all these pins are pretty and the great thing is super safe everything is plug and play uh you got little wires but this is just the board itself what you're really going to need is next is a kit um now the kit pretty much you're going to need 
these this is great because all these kits have a bunch of stuff but fundamentally what you need is a breadboard and that's that big uh tan thing in the middle that is just plug and play so you could pop in all your sensors and wires and everything is super easy to plug and troubleshoot um and then you got your arduino board there's many other competitors or alternatives or chinese knockoffs but they all fundamentally do the same because it's open source the designs uh for arduino are completely public which is cool and then you have a bunch of these little sensors like this one's a ultrasonic sensor that would uh, that would determine uh, distance. So if you have a little robot, think of like, um, you know, uh, the little cleaning Roombas uh, that bump around and clean clean like uh, people's house or stuff like that. Um, actually, I don't know if they use uh, ultrasonic sensors since they probably use light sensors, but they'll use some distance sensor to sense if they're getting close to a wall. And if you get too close to a wall, little program says, oh, turn, don't hit the wall and it'll turn to a doesn't sense the wall um that little blue box is a relay to turn on like high power <laughs> voltage like to a light switch or something like that you have little uh number displays oh this is so cool i'm geeking out right now you have servos and motors for moving different things you have an led um display right there so you could display all sorts of led I automate so funny story. I automated my first job uh, building a robot that took the work of three with what was three people. And the company was like, Hey, I was like, Hey, do you have a robot that would do that? They're like, Yeah, but it costs a hundred thousand dollars and it's made by this big defense companies. And I was like, Well, that's stupid. Turns out you could find their patents or their designs on Google, and then you can just it's just motors and sensors, and you can order stuff on Amazon and just build your own robot uh there's nothing special with it just write your own code which is cool you got little buttons or little remote control that you could uh, press any of those numbers and then arduino will sense it and then it could tell arduino to turn on and off either lights or sensors or motors or stuff completely from like across the room what else do we have in here leds a bunch of little uh little chirp sensor so it makes a little sound buttons um a little joystick so you can control the robot I mean, there's so many little things that you could plug into it, but don't get overwhelmed with all the, you need all these things. Start with a project and I'll show you a really cool project to get started. Um, then you have other kits that are out there. Some have like motors and wheels um, and then a bunch of other sensors and stuff that are in there. Like it really depends on your project that you would see what you need uh, to start off with. So that's what I would first recommend with. Um, this is super cool because then once you got the Arduino board, the board right here then you could just buy sensors basically you could buy sensors you have temperature sensors in here you have distance sensors you have a stream sensor you have an infrared sensor you have a touch sensor you have a joystick you have a button you have a uh, moisture sensor what else i've probably said that already there's all sorts of i mean this is a great kit because then you can start building little little projects one sensor at a time to learn how to manipulate the physical world how to sense the real world and then have the robot build a little circuit brain and then you write some code for it to do stuff automatically without human intervention like that to me is the coolest thing it is so powerful these kits and they're super affordable too highly recommend with the kit is getting a multimeter because just like coding it's going to teach you two things patience and how to troubleshoot those are super invaluable skills like most of the time when you're building a robot it's mostly troubleshooting <laughs> it could be a sensor it could be a wire it could be something loose it could be a part that gone bad it could be a bug in the code you could have missed just a semicolon oh my god the semicolon i've missed so much and it doesn't compile correctly but uh for the for your debugging the actual physical thing um or they're you're actually you're just building a circuit at the end of the day uh highly recommend is getting a multimeter that's going to help you test different things along the way so if you have a button to a light and something's not working you could just test along the way to find out where's the fault or where what's missing or something like that super worth it so got the arduino you got sensors and then you got a multimeter Psh, that's it you're good to go let's talk about education how are you going to learn how to use the arduino and how to code there are two ways. There's paid and there's free. With the paid, I highly recommend Udemy. Udemy is such a great like online resource for learning not just coding or or Arduino, but all sorts of other skills. They have a huge library of, uh, of courses. This one I highly recommend, this Arduino programming, because it's going to go through the basics, um, how to do LEDs, like you got input, sensing the input when someone presses a button, feedback, sensors, robotics, the internet of things. You could connect it up to the internet, which is really cool. LEDs, oh, so much fun. 
Now, that's one, but this one I really recommend too, Adafruit. Adafruit, they sell parts for all the kits. They're, li- they're really expensive, um, but support, you go to support a, an amazing creator who took time and resource to put together these amazing guides. This is what I really love about Adafruit is their guides. They have the best schematics and step-by-step guides for all their parts that they um, that they have. And check this out. Here's a, how do you hook up an Arduino to just turn a motor, just spin a motor at the end of the day. And so they have on the left-hand side, you have the overview, which shows basically which, what's the project. Then they break it down to the parts. What are the parts you're going to need? A motor, a transistor. So you're like, so that's where it is. Start with the project and then you can work backwards to see what you need. So you don't need to buy all the other stuff. It's like, look, I need some sensors, some capacitors, a transistor, a motor. Then once you have the parts, they have what's called schematics. Schematics are just the layout of how everything, how does the circuit connect? How do all the parts connect so that positive goes all the way to negative and then has a complete circuit? And then basically everything with Arduino, you have your power, ground. These are like your power and ground rails. So red wire and you just plug it in. Little wires, you just plug and play. It's so easy. There's no soldering. Um, so plug and play. You have the was that capacitor transistor elastic capacitor transistor and i think that's the diode yeah so and then you have the motor and then you have the the arduino and then they tell you so everything in the circuit is always going to have like minimally at least three pins you have power which is five volts you have ground uh, to complete the circuit and then you have data and that's going to be one of these pins and data is either going to be on off like five volts is on zero volts is off or it could be sensing um, something from, it could be a sensing a range, like a value, like between zero and 255, like is gonna be the voltage range. If the voltage is between zero and five volts, it's gonna turn that into a number so that you could determine what is the range, like determining a moisture sensor or how much light is in a room or something like that. But this is a circuit board, or, or this is a schematic, the layout. Then they work you through the next step. And you're just working step by step. This is that's why it's so great. And you could download these as a PDF. Then they have the code. Oh my gosh! And the code pretty much breaks down into like three things. You have your pretty much when Arduino starts up, it has no concept of what pins it has, what motors, what what is like what are its limbs or what it are its sensing um, its sense <laughs> like senses. Um, and so you're pretty much telling, hey Arduino. I want you to create, initialize a pin. I'm gonna call it motor pin and it's on pin three. And so when Arduino wakes up, it goes, oh, hey, pin three is what you wanna use and it's a motor pin. Cool, I'll remember that. And then you start up with a setup program where you're like, hey, let me set some things up uh, before you start the main program. So this is like the setup one where you're saying, hey, this pin is gonna be an output, meaning it's going to output five volts instead of inputting. You got serial so you could send data over to your computer so you can read if it's working. Um, and then the loop. The loop is what's going, it's running all the time, that's his brain. It's like, cool, uh, what do you want me to do? And it says, look, I want an if statement. What do you want to do? Check the serial, and if the speed is less, oh yeah, here we go. If the speed is less than or equal to zero, and the speed is less than No, it's greater than or equal to zero, and the speed is less than or equal to 255. Then go ahead and output the motor speed. Oh, it's been a while since I've coded with Arduino. But look, the code's already done. It's already made. And then you got transistors. Then they talk about, this is more education about how do the actual parts work. Here's an actual schematic of it. So these are a step-by-step of everything you want to learn. That's why I love Arduino guides for learning what is the process to take a project and actually execute on that project and turn it into an actual robot and then troubleshoot it because that's half the fun is troubleshooting. Let's talk about free resources on YouTube. So this one's a great one, Arduino course for everyone. And that's so there's a thing in coding when I started learning out. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to watch a whole tutorial and watch and be like, man, I don't know how this is going to apply to my project. I just want to make a gardening project at the end of the day. Like, how do I how is this going to apply? This is that's why I think project base is like the best way to learn. You're just learning enough just to complete the project. You don't have to be an expert in all like an expert in Arduino or coding to like get through your project. Start with the project and then you're troubleshooting along the way. 
So that's a great run there. This guy is amazing. Paul Paul has a whole tutorial series right here. All these videos right here you can watch. This guy is amazing. I've watched so many tutorials and he actually walks through and then he shows you also actually how to troubleshoot as well too, which is super cool. Highly recommend Paul. You're gonna see, he's gonna come up again later on. This guy, programming electronics, man, when you hear this, the beginning sound, I can't play it. Um, this guy has such amazing, well done, like tutorials. Like, so he has a whole YouTube series here, Arduino code for absolute beginners. And you're basically just learning the basics of how to like, how to, how to use the pins, the serial port. I know I'm like speaking Chinese cause you never heard this stuff be before, but slowly over time. And as you, the more you play with it, the more you'll start piecing together and these words will start connecting. You're like, Oh yeah, I know what that is. And it's just time time it's just spend more time practicing with it at the end of the day now projects i highly recommend before, instead of giving someone a board and a book and say here's arduino it's a full course good luck i wouldn't do that i would start with the project saying how would you use arduino to build a robot to automatically water plants and you're like oh you're right how would i do that well because that's the whole point of of being a, like a mechanical engineer is taking a problem taking a big complex problem and working it down to small little steps that little problems that you're solving you're like well i guess i need to sense the soil oh i need a sensor maybe a moisture sensor okay i'll get a moisture sensor and that will sense the moisture in the soil and well i guess my computer my little arduino is a brain and he has to read it and you know what is dry versus what is wet okay there's a threshold okay found the threshold between dry and wet well when it then i need a an if statement so i'm gonna tell my computer little arduino to say if the soil is dry or has this value then go ahead and turn the motor so then you have a sense a wire to sense the moisture and then you'll have uh, a wire over here to send or turn on your water pump. And again, water pump is just, I bet that one's super easy where it's just positive. It's just gonna actually, a little transistor. Transistor is just like a digital button, super cool. And it's gonna digitally like digitally press that button so it completes this circuit so that it can run the motor for a period of time. And then you need some user feedback like, hey Arduino, show me some light colors so that I know green you're watering or yellow you're not watering or red you're not gonna water. And so that the user or you can actually troubleshoot it and see if your circuit is working. And then that motor is just gonna run a pump to water your plants. And then you test it. This is such a great project to learn how to connect sensors, how to do if statements uh, to trigger an event when it hits a threshold, for example. Basically, if this, if this happens, do this. And then how to manipulate the physical world using a motor, turn on a motor using a transistor that just uh, takes water and pumps it into your plant. So this is a great project. I would pick any one of these projects and you can start off to start learning because everything is just project based. You don't have to be an expert, pick a project and that's how you're gonna learn. Arduino is gonna get you exposed to two things. The, the coding and then also like building circuits, uh, which is like the mechanical engineering of it. But if you really like the coding, highly recommend learning Python. That's going to be the next step. Python is super valuable as far as just work automating, like anything done with a computer, you can work a hundred times faster if you learn how to code because you're like, yeah, I could do this uh, <laughs> work or I could build a little computer program that could do the work for me. Hi, and that's how I, I out of my job twice with that one. I built the robot and the second one was a piece of code or a software suite that had a bunch of code. Most of it, not Python, it was something different, um, but same concepts. But literally I took an eight hour job and cut it down to one hour with 95 or actually 99% accuracy when people were doing it and they were messing up like 60% of the time. And they're like, oh, I guess I got to do over a lot of manual work. I'm like, Robots, computer programs, this is such a valuable skill. That's why this is such a hack. There's many different things about Python that you could learn, but I really recommend the book by Al called Automate the Boring Stuff. And the reason why is because he uses real world examples or scenarios like how to search for text in a file, how to create, update, move, and rename files on a computer. So if you wanna, your actual laptop computer, you wanna automate 
a laptop, you're going to use Python. That's the really cool. Arduino is like robotics in a sense, but then when you're on a computer and you're like, man, I just want to automate stuff on a computer. Python's going to be your best friend. Like, look at these. How to send out reminder emails. How to split, merge, and watermark encrypted PDFs. How to update and format text in P oh, in Excel. If you combine Excel with Python, you will be a god at any company. <laughs> like, it is crazy. So that's why these are real ac actualable uh, projects and skill sets that you can apply. Then you can see how to use Python in your day-to-day -day life. Al has the same course on Udemy. Super cool. Highly recommend it. But then for people that are budget tight, Al, God bless Al, Al put his whole series also on YouTube, on a YouTube playlist right here. So you can learn, walk, he'll actually walk you through step by step on how to go through the exercises in the book. Please buy the book and support Al, like even subscribe to his YouTube channel. Like Al was very kind enough to take the time to teach you how to do programming on YouTube. So highly recommend that. Now, Back to the robotics thing. You've got this cool robot and it has a bunch of sensors and wires and it automates things. And you're like, that's awesome, but I want to build a case for it or I want to build a cool lever or I need a special fitting to fit my uh, water pump or my, uh, my plant, for example, to hold the hose in a certain angle. That's where you're going to get into 3D printing. That's the final piece. With a th and for 3D printers, I've come down in price so significantly uh, 3d printers there's two different types of 3d printers there's PLA pretty much you want to think of it if you ever worked with like a weed whacker and it has like a bunch of wire let's see there you go basically it feeds a wire of plastic in I have it over here too I have a kit feeds a wire in and it prints it layer by layer um, this is one way don't recommend doing it inside per se you do have to just be a little conscious of like it it is pretty much melting plastic so you are pr melting a lot of plastic in your room so you don't want to put this in the kids bedroom kind of things basically but a 3d printer is oh my gosh once you learn how to use a 3d printer you're never going back you everything you're going to be like i can make a custom this or i could fix this why go to the store and build and buy something when i can create my own and you can create any physical object in many different materials using a 3d printer so that's oh worth it is that's going to be the missing piece as far as if you're getting into robotics but john how do i design the part oh, great i'm so glad that you asked and that's going to be a software called fusion 360 right here fusion 360. fusion 360 this is what like actual in mechanical engineers use uh, at the job to design model and test a, a robot you could even do like this cool little like linkage so that you could actually move it in the computer program and it will move just like an actual lever and actually so you can actually see how your part will uh, work in the physical world oh my god this fusion 360 is so so powerful very easy to learn and incredibly valuable as far as the skills of mechanical engineers so um, and the great thing too it's free for personal use oh <gasps> I love free God bless them. So highly recommend you could download their free Fusion 360. And then where are you going to learn? YouTube, of course. And here's Paul again. Paul was very kind to put together a full 3D printing course um, using Fusion 360, where he's going to walk you step by step on a printer, how to set up the printer, how to create your account, and then how to actually design a part all the way through. So watching this is going to be a great tutorial. But there's other great tutorials. Paul did another one. There's another one, Fusion 360 or Die Trying. This is another one where he teaches, that's a Prusa 3D printer in the back, a little more expensive, but nice as far as like premium. <laughs> it's like the Toyota of like 3D printers. <laughs> so you can see the reel right here of plastic. It just takes a little plastic um, feed, a little wire, put, uh, has a little stepper motor. It melts it with the nozzle and it prints it one layer at a time, just like one little layer. And then it prints, does another little layer and then prints the next layer. And it's just doing that over and over and over. It is so fun to watch. Oh my gosh. And then you set it and forget it. You just like <laughs> design the cat, a little, uh, a little model of a cup, send it to the printer, go have lunch. And then you come back and you have your physical part ready to go. And you look at it and you be like, Mm. Oh, speaking of which, you actually will also, when you 3D printers, these are the extra things, you need a digital caliper. 
Yeah, you need one of these. Get a digital caliper because when your part comes off and then you go to test fit, it's going to be either too tight, too loose, too big, too small, or something that you're going to be like, oh, I need just a little bit more. This is going to be your best friend as far as just measuring um, the tolerances or the size of the part that you either want to design or you want to modify. You're like, mm, I need to, oh, it says it's six millimeters. I need to make it five. Good to know to make it fit my part or whatever. So highly recommend a digital caliper for that. This one is a great guide called Fusion Essentials, getting started with Fusion 360. It's a playlist. All of the links that I talk about will be down in the description of the video so you can find links to everything to get started. So this one's a great one if you just wanna really take your Fusion 360 skills to the next level. This is a great series that's really gonna, like you learn this series, you can model anything your imagination comes up with. So much fun. Lastly, let's talk about inspiration because you're going to be want to get inspired. You want to see other makers make some really cool stuff like an Iron Man suit. And you're like, I want to make my own Iron Man suit with the Iron Man mask that opens up automatically. Like, yeah, that's where creators like James Bruton, I hope I pronounce his name correctly, is uh, going to be such a great inspiration where he, I mean, look at this, how, to, how I built a Star Wars walking droid. How to build a giant robot fury, fury, Furby. <laughs> How like this guy takes mechanical engineering and makes it so much fun to learn. He's going to walk you through step by step of how he uses whether it be robots, motors, Arduinos, 3D printing, the same things that we've been talking about to make really cool objects and stuff like that. So look at building a better Star Wars ATAT toy. Like, oh my gosh, like geek out. You'll have so much fun getting inspired with that. Of course, we're going to talk about Hacksmith Industries. This guy is the G of building amazing robots, like stuff that you've seen. He built his own Cybertruck. Let's go to popular real quick. Like this guy, he's built, look at this, Thor's Stormbreaker hammer plus Iron Man. Is that not Iron Man? Captain America's shield. Captain America's shield, like Thor's hammer, John Wick's bulletproof vest. A, a real life lightsaber like come on this is like the best inspiration for like mechanical engineering danger because also there goes your wallet you're gonna want to spend a lot of money after this but hacksmith industries is a great inspiration to learn frankly built is another gentleman that uses 3d printers robotics to build some amazing amazing gadgets toys props all sorts of stuff like again these guys take the creating and just bring it to the next level. Nevon Projects actually builds some pretty sophisticated projects, but it's going to show you just a, a little more outside, more apple or more real world stuff. Um, as far as like, what was that? You have a 3D printer, which is kind of cool. He shows you really cool gadgets, like a solar powered pumping system for a water mill. Like, so these are really sophisticated robots, but it's going to take your education to the next level. Um, so you're not just building props for like toys or stuff like that. But oh my gosh super inspiring like i just want to build stuff now will meet will mill will build some really sophisticated robots like literally a robotic hand like whoa like this is some next level stuff this is where you're really taking your robotic stuff to the next level and you're like but they're all the same parts 3d printing uh, servos motors a microcontroller or a brain or arduino to do some action same all the fundamentals continue to build and and get you to this higher level where you're eventually building robotic hands as prosthetics to help people who lost their hand for example um, but yeah, that's everything uh, to get started in robotics from everything from the club to Arduino to kits to Python or like, our, yeah, wait, let's go here to Python um, to Fusion 360 to model everything. And then lastly, inspiration as far as amazing creators. So I'm going to put the link in the bio for all everything that you saw uh, so that you can get started in robotics and have an amazing career as a mechanical engineer or just a hobbyist where you just want to turn your ideas into reality or build a robot to automate your work or jobs or to make your life smarter and simpler. That's the whole theme of this show or my YouTube series is showing things so that people can learn how to work smarter, not harder with technology. So I learned all of these tools and 
shameless plug is my company called simple tech skills where we teach you not robotics or an arduino and stuff like that we're more for professionals and companies with teams that want to work smarter uh with notion ClickUp, password management uh artificial intelligent chat gpt we're going to teach you the skills so that you can you could get work done basically what take what would take someone a week you could get done in a day that's what's the really cool thing so i'm jonathan acuna thank you so much for learning and geeking out about robotics with me this is a passion and joy something i always love sharing and talking about um put any questions that you have in the comments and i'll see you on the next episode goodbye